So, um, as I was saying before, I think I am the uh, easternmost um, person dealing with seals uh, right now, because uh, with this presentation, we are traveling to uh, Byzantium uh, and we are talking about uh, Byzantine seals and uh, so uh, Eastern uh, medieval seals, whereas um, the main focus and topic of these panels um, is, as far as I'm concerned, uh, Western medieval seals. So I, I feel a little bit uh, exotic right now. So um, that's why I would like to start uh, by saying very quickly what a Byzantine seal is. Um, it is, uh, of course, a small round object, as we might um, expect. It is mostly made of lead. Um, it is used to authenticate a document, and uh, it's very often bearing name, faction, and titles of the seal issuer and the um, chosen iconography. Um, and uh, the main difference, uh, I must say, between Byzantine seals and uh, Western medieval seals is that the documents to which the seals were attached are today lost. So we do not have, except for a uh, perhaps uh, a dozen of, um, of documents, we do not have documents um, attached to seals. So we only have the seal, we only have the object. And uh, that's why they are studied per se. They are not studied as um, part uh, of a document. So uh, just, just to show uh, how a Byzantine seal um, looks like, um, we have uh, on the obverse, we have an iconography and on the reverse, we have um, a legend in this case, but it, can, it might be um, that on both sides, we have an iconography, on both sides, we have um, a legend or we have a monogram or um, we have a monogram and a legend. So um, it's a very, um, uh, varying, <laughs> so to say. Um, and uh, yes, in this case, we have on the obverse a very nice uh, Archangel Michael. Uh, and on the reverse, we have all the information that we need, all the information that we need um, our seal to tell us. So uh, we have the name of the person, so it is uh, Michael. Uh, we have um, its uh, imperial, um, imperial dignity, uh, imperial title which is Vestachis, and um, we have uh, its office, which is the economos of the Nea, of the Nea Ecclesia, so of the new church, and it is dated to the mid um, 11th century. So just very quick, um, I would like to show you how a Byzantine seal is produced, uh, since we've seen a lot of seals uh, made of wax. Um, uh, Byzantine seals are uh, mostly made of metal, mostly made of lead, and they are um, struck by means of a uh, matrix called Vuloterion, which is this very nice, um, very nice tool here. And um, we must bear in mind that uh, we have an estimate extent of um, 80,000 uh, seals um, coming from the Byzantine um, period um, worldwide. But only six of these matrices, only six of these vuloteria are um, uh, survived. So um, we, we can only imagine how many vuloteria we lost if we see that the ratio is uh, six to um, 80,000. So um, we have this. Um, we have this tool, which is um, which has um, hammer-like projections uh, engraved uh, in negative, and we put a blank um, in the space uh, between the two uh, projections, and then we struck it with a hammer. Uh, I know this is not very Byzantine, but uh, this I think will do the deed. Uh, and by means of a strike, uh, a strike, we produce um, a very nice seal which um, bears actually the impression of the negative engraved um, Vuloterion. So, but we are not here to talk about seals, we are here to talk about Sigidoc. So, um, why did we um, think of doing a 
standard or an encoding standard. Um, we noticed that we have some shortcomings in Byzantine sigillography as far as um, consistency is concerned. First of all, because we have a different uh, print edition standards which have inconsistencies, so intrinsic inconsistency, uh, which hinder the uh, cross-referencing of information. We have a lot of unpublished material, uh, so the unpublished material outweighs by a lot um, the material which is published. And um, what Rosario was saying before, uh, we have uh, restricted access to um, published materials because it is mostly kept by archives, by monastic archives, by um, libraries, by private collections, and last but not least, by auction houses. Because there is actually a flourishing um, market um, of Byzantine lead seals. Then we have scattered publications. Um, apart from the big corpora, we have, um, you know, small um, articles here and there in this journal, in that um, collected volume, and uh, with a very limited spreading and developing of the knowledge. And last but not least, uh, we have a lack of training and a lot of uncertainty in the transmission of sigillographic knowledge. And what we wanted to do is actually um, the very definition of a standard. Uh, we wanted Byzantine sigillography to have the very definition of a standard. So a shared, sustainable and repeat repeatable way of doing something, which uh, materializes in guidelines, recommendations in order to get consistency, reliability, com compatibility and interoperability. And I hope to show um, how. Um, CGDoc is um, an XML-based and TI-compliant encoding standard for the digital edition of Byzantine seals and the um, in digitally, digitally enhanced conversion of paper published editions. Um, its genealogy is actually self-explanatory uh, since we said that it is TI-compliant. Um, so TI is like the grandfather of uh, CGDoc um, of which um, it is a subset. Um, we um, walked uh, in the steps of Epidoc uh, and we actually did pretty much what uh, Epidoc did for epi epigraphy. We did it for uh, sigillography and a couple of years ago, um, a uh, platform called FS, Epidoc Frontend Services, um, has been released, um, which we used for um, transformation in HTML. So, um, and I, uh, everyone uh, with whom we're talking about CGDoc uh, says, oh, cool, you're doing a SEAL database. No, we're not doing a SEAL database. Um, we are uh, developing an encoding standard. So it is what we need in order to create an online CGDoc corpus. Um, CGDoc is made of um, some, uh, components which are um, very important and uh, are um, what actually um, allows us to have um, interoperability and to linking our data to um, the rest of the world, <laughs> if I might say so. Um, so um, I will just go very quickly through all of this. We have a schema which is compatible with the Epidoc and TI all schemas. We have a template, so the edition structure. We have a style sheet for HTML transformation and we also have a set of style sheets for the scholarly edition of um, seals. We have a highly customized version of the FS platform I mentioned before, and we have a set of um, encoding uh, guidelines. We also um, have a set of files intended to be shared among all um, uh, future and prospective CGDoc projects. And in this respect, we have ID lists, uh, control vocabularies, um, authority lists, and ontologies. Um, that's how um, CGDoc treats the metadata. Uh, and uh, if you are familiar with TI or with Epidoc, this won't uh, bewilder you uh, because it's pretty much a TI header then, um, that I will show you um, after in its um, FS generated web page. And that's how CGDoc treats the text. 
um, again, if you're familiar with TI or with um, or with Epidoc, uh, you might notice here that um, we have added another div for the footnotes. And uh, you can't see it here, but I will show you um, in a minute. Um, we um, uh, we split the uh, div edition uh, in um, editorial and in, in interpretive, so to speak, and in diplomatic transcription um, because uh, of the different um, of, of the different way uh, Byzantine bibliography treats. Uh, the diplomatic transcription um, also on a paper published um, edition, but I will show you in a minute. So um, this is uh, a nice uh, a nice graphic that we did in order to show how we go to the from the seal through um, the um, CGDoc uh, edition template to the FS generated web page. But enough talking. I want to show you how the template look like, uh, how the um, web page looks like. So I chose uh, the same seal that I showed at the very beginning. So uh, Michael Vestachis and Economos of the Nea Ecclesia. And um, this is still in its beta version. So uh, it's still very raw and um, it lacks completely web design. So please bear with me uh, and. Uh, I know it's not uh, too pleasant to see, but we're working on it. Uh, as you can see, we have here all the um, all the metadata, uh, which go um, under uh, different uh, subsections. For example, the artifact, the physical description, with um, all of the um, all of the data which are relevant to uh, Byzantine seals, but to seals uh, also in general. Then we have all the um, data concerning um, the dating of the uh, seal. And then we have uh, the, um, the history of the seal as, a, um, as an object. So uh, where uh, it was bought, uh, where does it come from and so on and so forth. Then the description of the obverse and the reverse and uh, publication, uh, if it is published, uh, if it has parallels, um, and so on and so forth. Then we have the facsimile. What is the facsimile in the um, edition template? So the image, the digital reproduction, and then we have the editions. So we have the interpretive edition and the diplomatic edition um, used, um, done used the font Athena Ruby, which was, uh, developed at Dumbarton Oaks by Joel Kalbesmaki um, and was optimized for Byzantine coins and seals. Then we have legend and translation, commentary, and uh, notes. And uh, everywhere we can put links um, either within the corpus or to the uh, World Wide Web. For example, here we have a link to the prosopography of Byzantine word um, and all, uh, to all the prosopographical data sets, for example, which are very relevant for Byzantine seals. Um, and uh, yes, uh, I won't uh, speak long uh, because I see that I'm running out of time. Uh, just uh, wrap it up by saying um, that our goal is actually to create a geographic search engine. And uh, it will work like this. So um, there will be a unified search platform uh, created um, with the shared files I mentioned before. And every CGDoc project will um, feed their data to this search platform. And as for now, we have uh, all of these collections willing to cooperate. I say willing because this is not even yet a functioning project. This is just um, in its beta version, as I was saying. And um, the synergy among corpora will uh, be um, like that. So the contributors will work individually on the same authoring environment and will share their achievements, which will actually populate the search platform. Just to wrap it up, um, a couple of deadlines. Um, as I was saying, CGDoc in its 
is in its beta version and the uh, released uh, the release is uh, planned for spring 2021 we also had a couple of setbacks uh, as far as projects are concerned um, so I can totally relate to what has been said um, before and uh, along to the release along with the release of CGDoc 1.0 there will be the publication of a test corpus of circa 40 uh, Byzantine lead seals on this very site, which is as for now empty. And uh, yes, that would be all from me. <laughs>